Welcome ROS developers to this fourth and final episode on this ROS project series building a robot that works in a restaurant and takes the orders from the, um, the kitchen to the different tables and waits for the customers to pick the objects up, the orders, the drinks and food and it detects and goes and everything using a web app. So. Uh, setting up the real robot is not an easy task, uh, but it depends on the robot that you use. In this case, I used a turtle bot from Rose Components that I leave the video, uh, I leave the link in the video description. But I had to do some modifications. For one, I had to install Ros Melodic. That meant that I had to uh, wipe out the Ubuntu that was installed and install Ubuntu 18. Once that was done, then I had to install ROS Melodic. Uh, thankfully, uh, there was a high guarantee that it would work because I had already tested ROS Melodic in ROS Development Studio with all the pipelines simulated. So at least ROS would work. So that's a very good point for ROS Development Studio because I had everything tested for Melodic and ready to go. Various things that have to be connected to the Nook, to the system, the Ubuntu Melodic um, system, which are one, the Kabuki base to move the robot around, two, the laser, and three, the load sensor. So I had to download one, the TurtleBot um, stack, so that I could be able to move the, the, the robot through twist commands in ROS and that would mean that it should connect through USB to the Kabuki base and then through um, some kind of command vel topic and twist commands it would move the Kabuki base in a normal fashion because the Kabuki base has a keyboard teleop but it's really spartan and doesn't go very um, smooth. So the TurtleBot stack, what it, what it does is smooth the movement. Yeah. Then I had to download also the Hokuyo drivers uh, for ROS. So a package that connects to the USB and publishes the readings of the laser. And finally, I had to also download my own code that I did to communicate with the Arduino of the load sensor and publish the load sensor data. One note that it's really important and gave me a lot of problems and I don't want you also to have those problems is that uh, when you have USBs in, uh, in Ubuntu, you have loads of problems. The permissions change. So, so every time that you pl unplug and plug the USB again or just if you start up the system again, the permissions are changed. What I did was make the changes so that those USBs had the same permissions all the time and also generate some sim links in some of the USBs so that no matter where I connected the USB when 
I connect, for example, the Arduino or the Kabuki, it would detect that it was the Kabuki hardware and then generate the symlink so that the name of the device, so it would be uh, forward slash device forward slash uh, Arduino or um, Kabuki and not uh, USB 1 T T 0 M whatever so it would be always the same so that in my ROS launches I would always connect to the same device name and uh, no matter where I connect the USBs that's really important especially when you Mm, you are fiddling around, you're connecting, for example, in my case, a keyboard. I had to connect a keyboard and an HDMI to do that configuration, the first configurations in the NUC. So that was really important. And one of the errors I did is that the laser, I didn't do that. And in some tests in the real robot, I had some connecting issues. And those issues were made because of that. Because sometimes it would be assigned to another port and I couldn't connect the lasers. And also one modification I had to do to the Nuke was uh, inside the, the BIOS because what I needed was that with the switch of the Kabuki, it should power the Kabuki and the sensors and the Nuke at the same time. And the problem was that I turned on the Kabuki but the nuke had to be started manually through the on and off switch of the nuke. So I changed the BIOS so that it would start up when the power went up and shut down when the power shut down, basically. And that way, when you turn off the Kabuki, it turns off everything. And when you turn it on, it turns on also the, the nuke system. So. Now that the hardware was working, I created the 3D prints of the cases uh, that I did for the simulation. So I highly recommend you that you don't do what I did, which was in one piece because it's really difficult to produce in 3D uh, printing. So I highly recommend you that you do pieces and bolt them together. And also I highly recommend you that you um, leave some kind of door or access port so that you can connect ports at least in the in the first development uh, in the first phase because you need to connect to the HDMI you need to connect the keyboard to do some changes and this kind of stuff and it was a, a nonsense so I basically had to drill a hole in the model in the 3d print so that I could pass through the cables so then I created a very Spartan um, load sensor rig, which was basically two planks of wood uh, with a sensor in between and some bolts that essentially made, the, made it work Spartan, but it worked. Then once everything was set up, so I downloaded the code that I used in the simulation and made some modifications on some topics that weren't exactly named in the same way. So basically I, I gave a tag that essentially activated the real. I highly recommend you that you try to have the same topics because that way it's transparent. But sometimes some things had to be launched in simulation that in the real robot don't have to. So for example, the load sensor plugin, um, that's not needed in the real robot because we have a real sensor and this kind of stuff. Or, or for example, instead of that, you have to connect through USB to the load sensor. So there are some modifications that you have to make so that it works with the real and the simulated version. Once I downloaded and compiled everything, I then connected through ROS Development Studio uh, with, the ROS, with the real robot connection system to the real robot. And that way I could monitor everything through RVIS, for example, in uh, in my in ROS development studio I could also execute stuff without having to physically have a keyboard and a screen connected to the real robot which is a huge advantage because you'll see that most of my my tests in the real robot are made launching stuff through ROS development studio 
because that way I could have everything centralized. And also, I didn't have to install ROS Melodic in my own computer. So ROS Development Studio there helped me a lot. So once everything was into place, I made a test in a control environment. I mapped, I set up some waypoints, some very simple and very near waypoints, and I started up the, the main pipeline and the web app and it worked. So bear in mind that the web app is executed inside the real robot. So everything is contained there. I'm just connecting through ROS Development Studio to monitor and I'm connecting through my mobile phone to the web app that's generated inside that robot. Okay, and once everything was working in a control environment, is what it was time to go real. As you saw in episode one, we went to Costa Coffee and I had to map the, the real environment. That's the first thing I had to do. Then set some waypoints. In my case, I set up the base in, in a place that didn't disturb a lot to the clients. And then I set up two tables and I made my tests. So I booted up the system with my launches inside, launching the pipeline, and I just placed an, an object on top and with my, my app in my mobile phone, doing as I was a, a, a worker there, I just calibrated and then went to my table and hit table two. And the robot, as you can see, it went to the table and stopped the object and it detected that and then it went back. So things that I would improve. Always in the first version of a product, the prototype, there are loads of things that you have to change, that's for sure. Uh, and the first thing I would change would be um, the load sensor setup, I would do it more robust. So I would do a concentric cylinder, one inside another, and on the bottom have that load sensor. That would be much more robust. Then I would create the lower part with access ports for developers. So I would put a security key so that not anyone can connect there, but with a security key so that I can debug and see what's happening there inside. And also I would set up a static IP so that I could connect always to that uh, robot without any problems. And that's it. So this is the end of this Rosh project, Barista Robot. So did you like it? Did you dislike it? Leave a like if you liked it and uh, comment on more Rosh projects that you would like us to do. Some ideas maybe we could do it, I don't know. Uh, we have some, some stuff thought already, so be ready for that. And see you in the next video. Bye.